What's up? Welcome to this video. I hope you're well. I hope you're swell. We're talking everything you need to know to get started in Affinity Studio. Now, if you are coming over from Adobe, congratulations, you just saved a lot of money. If you are coming over from Canva, you've just unlocked a bunch of awesome tools to make yourself pretty limitless. If you use Canva, you might find some things limiting. Don't think this is too daunting. You can learn this. It's really awesome and a lot of fun. And finally, if you're an existing Affinity user, this is the new workspace. This is, uh, this is it. So what I want to note quickly, if you don't know anything about Affinity, is this used to be three different programs. There was a program called Affinity Designer, which was sort of their version of Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Photo, which was their version of Photoshop, and finally Affinity Publisher, which was their version of Adobe InDesign. They've taken all these three programs, combined them into one workspace, and now it's called Affinity Studio. So I will also note, you're gonna need a Canva account to use this. It can be a free account. We're gonna be able to use most of the tools some of the tools, which are AI only, are locked behind uh, the Canva Pro account. So let's get started. Let's open a new document. And we're going to do that by going up to File and, oh, I don't know, Selecting New. Okay, so when we pull this up, on the left-hand side, you just get a bunch of presets. So they've just set a bunch of stuff that you can just basically click on, hit Create Document, and start working. Here's the important things to note here. If you want to change your document from Portrait to Landscape, it's right up here. And you can see in the preview, it changes back and forth, the portrait to landscape. Now, you can type in whatever size you want here. If you wanted to type in your own document size, you could change the units to pixels and make it whatever you want. Uh, a lot of things people are worried about are transparent background. So you can have a clear background. You can check that off here, on and off. And if you want to do margins, bleed, all that stuff is down here. Finally, if you want to type in your own setting, so just say I wanted a, a standard HD setting here. Uh, oh, it's 1920. 1920. Should edit that out, but I'm not gonna. Uh, and you could hit create preset, although this is already one of the presets. So I'm gonna click create document just to get started. Okay, cool. The first thing I wanna talk about are these spaces up here. You'll see one's called vector, one's called pixel, and one's called layout. Now, if you put your mouse over top, I'm gonna click on the vector one and just hover over top here. It's gonna tell you this is Vector Studio for graphic design and illustration. So this particular workspace is for vector work. Now, if you don't know what vectors are, Designers use them mostly to create logos and things for brands. You can make a vector super small, but you can blow it up to the size of a building and it won't lose quality. So it uses some sort of mathematical equation to make that happen, but this is called vector work. Next, we go over to the pixel workspace. And if you put your mouse over top, it tells you for correcting and enhancing images. So this is their version of Photoshop. So if you're editing photos or manipulating them, you'd go to this workspace. And you also have this layout uh, workspace here and this is basically it says for structured page layout this is if you want to create a brochure or a magazine you could do everything here and finally i'll touch on this at the end here but this is the canva ai workspace for all the ai stuff now cool thing about these workspaces is i can put my mouse over top of one of them right click and select edit vector studio because i'm on the vector version and right here i can change the name to whatever i want i can change the color of it i can change the icon and i can change whatever description i want now, the neat thing about this is, is I can build my own workspace. I can create my new space, call it whatever I want, add whatever tools I want, and just work out of there. So it's pretty limitless there. It's really cool. Another great thing about this is they all use the same file extension, .af. So if you're working in the vector space or pixel or layout, all the file types are .af. And if you share the file with anybody, it will open up and just work seamlessly. So that's fantastic. Now, I want to note if you're an existing Affinity user, if you have brushes or presets you want to bring in, the best way to do that so you don't have to do it manually is go up to File, Import Content, and select Mine's from Affinity Photo 2, but you may have version 1, and that'll bring in all your presets automatically, so it's a bit of a time saver there. Now, let's talk about this so it doesn't look like overwhelming or too much. Let's break this down here. So if you'll notice here, I'm on the vector workspace in the top left. Now, the tools down the left-hand side here, these are they're just that. These are all your tools. Think of this like a toolbox. You're going to go grab a tool, and you're going to use it, put it back when you're done, or your dad will get mad. So if you'll notice that I click through these workspaces, I'm going to go from vector to pixel. You'll see that the tools change. I'm going to go to layout, and again, the tools change to something different, right? Now, the reason that this is great is because you can pick the tool for the job in the workspace, but don't let it overwhelm you, because let's go back to vector, and now let's look at the right side. These are our panels. So if I'm on vector, and I click to pixel, You'll see it doesn't really change too much. If I go to layout, again, it doesn't really change too much. So once you know what you're looking for, 
The workspace remains the same and it's pretty cool. So if I was in Vector and I wanted to create a logo, I could do that here. Then say I had some photography and I wanted to edit those photos, I could do it here. And finally, I could take it to the third space. I could take that logo, take those pictures, put it all in a layout for a brochure or a magazine. It would all be done in one space. So that's really, really cool. Now let's go through these tools here. Let me go to the pixel workspace. Now, when you're looking at your tools on the left-hand side, if you put your mouse over top, it's gonna tell you the name of the tool and in brackets, what the shortcut on your keyboard is. So the move tool, if I hit V on my keyboard, that pops up. It gives me a little description of what it is. So I kind of know what I'm looking at. Now, some of these things you'll notice in the tool, they have this little, um, little marker in the corner here. Now, what that means is there's more tools in here. So if I click on this, I'm gonna get these other tools. Now, what Affinity normally does, if you think of this like a little tool drawer, they compile tools together that they think work together or are similar or the same. So you can always find more stuff by clicking here. Okay, another thing I wanna to touch on here is the document setup. So if you click up here in any workspace, you'll see document setup. And this is where you can just change the size of the document, but it's the quickest way. A lot of people start with it. They start without a transparent background, but they want a transparent background. So if you click on document setup and you can just scroll down and click, uh, say for example here, transparent background, you can change other settings as well, of course, like margins and things like that. But for example, I'll pick transparent background. I'm gonna hit okay. Now you can see it changes to this checkerboard, which means the background is now transparent. Something else I want to touch on here. When Affinity uh, 2 users, we used to have the option to remove the background. We had an object selection and a subject selection. Now, it looks like they've taken one of these and put them behind a paywall. And the other one's kind of hidden, so I just want to show you that. So it's called object selection. Now, I have it in my toolbar because I've added it. But what you need to do first is go to your app settings, which is right here. You're going to click on that, and you're going to look for machine learning models. Now, these are all some, you can see these are locked behind the paywall with this little uh, crown here. But this segmentation, which is object selection tool, is available, but you have to download it locally and install it. So I've installed mine. So if you do that, it'll be on your machine, but you might not see it in your tool. So once you install it, what you're going to do is go up to View, Tools, and select Customize. And when you do that, you're going to get all these tools. It might be a bit overwhelming. So you can narrow it down here. I would go to Photo. Now mine's already in here. I already have it selected, so it's, it's not highlighted. But for example, say this was it, I could just click and drag it into my toolbar and let it go. And that would give me the object selection. Now, object selection allows you to uh, select something in a photo and essentially mask out the rest. So you're removing the background or removing whatever you want uh, out of the way so you can select a particular object. I just wanted to point that out. And finally, let's quickly touch on this Canva AI workspace here if I click on this. Now, this is basically that. You're going to have to pay a yearly subscription. Uh, I guess you can pay monthly to use these tools. Now, these are things that you, uh, you know, standard stuff. So the generative expand tool, there's the generative fill tool, there's the edit tool. So you don't need to use these. The program is extremely powerful without it. Um, I think it's like $120 a year where I am. So totally up to you, totally optional. You've got all these workspaces that you can use for free with a free Canva account. If you want to upgrade for the AI options, you can opt for that as well. So that's everything you need to kind of get a feel for how it works. I think you should go in there, start playing around, check it out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Please tap, tap, tap that like button. I'll see you in the next one.